Hi guys, it is another hot, sticky day here in the second collapse of civilization down here in uh, Chuha, Mexico, where uh, I am waiting for my taxi to arrive to take me to the big city for some dental tourism while I still can. And it is a hot, steamy, it is a Tuesday. I think we're at February 21st, 2023, and uh, so anywho, uh, as you probably know, I am a climate refugee, that I escaped the baking heat and growing hurricanes of the great state of Texas. How many years, going on four years ago, I became a climate refugee and moved to uh, New York. Of course, now I have to be a reverse climate refugee for half of the year because of this thing called winter. But anyway, I have been, uh, you know, I was claiming like a clueless moron. Good Lord, probably for the past 10 years, I've been talking about how obviously as climate change and all of this shit gets worse and worse, heat waves and hurricanes and, the, and the, all the rest, you're going to see more and more people moving out of the southern U.S. to the northern U.S. <laughs> You're right. Uh, so once again, I, I, I completely miscalled that one. Uh, as more and more people continue to pour into the south. Uh, you know, Florida and Texas always being the two fastest growing states is Florida, Texas, North Carolina, and Arizona are also high on the list. Florida, Texas, North Carolina, Arizona, uh, all of these clueless morons continuing to pour into all of these states. And I'm thinking, okay, at what point, what's it gonna take for this to reverse itself. At, at what point are you going to start seeing a net migration out of the southern U.S., out of Florida, out of Texas, out of Arizona, out of North Carolina, a getting uh, up to uh, like upstate New York, for instance, which uh, I guess New York has lost more population in the past several years than any other state, most of which was uh, people from the city fleeing uh, corona panic uh, in the past couple of years. So there's a little bit of an aberration there, but New York State has lost more people than any other state while Florida and Texas have gained the most. And so anyway, when this story showed up here on the mainstream media today from Business Insider by a fellow named Jake Biddle. Jake Biddle has a book to sell you. Uh, Jake's book, uh, where is, is called The Great Displacement climate change and the next American migration. So I haven't read Jake's book. I didn't hear about it till today. And I, and I would like to get it. So I don't know if this is directly a chapter from the book or it's just Jake commenting on, in this case, the Florida Keys, the southernmost, uh, these, I'm pretty sure Key West is the southernmost spot in the United States. And this is a long, involved piece. Uh, I will put the link on to it, and you can read it yourself. I'm just going to read the first chapter and then come out, come back with a few comments um, about this article. <clears throat> Take it away, Jake Biddle. 
Florida's climate exodus has already begun. Huh. And it's only going to get worse. I could swear that Florida, how many people moved to Florida last year? Good Lord, let's find out. How many, okay, Florida's climate exodus has already begun. Let's see. How many people moved to Florida in 2022? 318,855. Florida at 318, Texas at 231,000, North Carolina at 100,000, and South Carolina at 84,000 were the states with the most net migration gains in 2022. So pretty much 1,000 people per day, clueless morons pouring into Florida every day of the year last year. And here we are on the mainstream media. Florida's climate exodus has already begun. Hmm. So that's, we're looking at the Florida Keys. All right. The state's climate exodus has already begun. Yes, as many residents will be proud to tell you, the thousand-odd islands that make up the Florida Keys are one of a kind. There is no other place in the world that boasts the same combination of geological, ecological, and sociological characteristics. The islands have a special addictive quality about it, an air of freedom that leads people to turn their backs on mainland life. The Keys are also the first flock of canaries in the coal mine of climate change. Over the past few years, over the past few years, the residents of these islands have been forced to confront a phenomenon that will affect millions of Americans before the end of the century. Their present, meaning the Keys' present calamity, offers a glimpse of our national future. <clears throat> Nature is changing. Today's, today's hurricanes tend to be stronger, wetter, and less predictable than those of the last century. They hold more moisture, speed up more quickly, and stay together longer. It's difficult to tell for certain what role climate change plays in any individual storm, but in the case of Hurricane Irma, which slammed the Keys in September 2017, there is little doubt that the warmth of the Caribbean Sea made the storm more powerful, allowing the vortex to regain strength overnight as it barreled towards the islands. As global warming continues to ratchet up the temperature of our oceans, we can expect more storms like Irma. The danger to the Keys does not end with hurricane season either. A slow but definite rise in average sea levels over the past decade has contributed to an increase in tidal flooding, leaving some roads and neighborhoods inundated with salt water for months at a time. In the five years since Irma, the bill has come due. The hurricane made undeniable what previous floods had only suggested, that climate change will someday make life in the archipelago impossible to sustain. The storm was the first episode in a long and turbulent process of collapse, one that will expand over time to include market contraction, government disinvestment, and eventually a wholesale retreat toward the mainland. Irma may not have destroyed the Keys in one stroke, but the storm ran down the clock on life on the islands, push, pushing 
comps the key's unique name for resonance into a future that once seemed remote. The impulse to stay, which once bespoke a conch's devotion to his or her adopted home, now looks a little more like denial. Hmm. The decision to leave, on the other hand, which once signified surrender, now looks more like acceptance of the inevitable. And that is the springboard to this very interesting article. And I highly suggest you go on here and, and read the article. I'll, I'll put the link to it. But one thing you're not going to find in the uh, article is what the population was before Irma and what it is now. This took about 30 seconds. I googled, you know, I asked Google, uh, what, you know, to show me the population. Uh, so they went back to 2019. Okay. So in 20, so I guess the big exodus was in, uh, you know, after Irma. So in 2018 and 2019, about 3,000 people. Uh, which was maybe three and a half or four percent of the population. Uh, so anyway, in 2019, the population dropped by a couple of hundred people. So there were 74,228 people living in the Florida Keys in 2019 which, as I say, is about 3,000 people less than the 77,000 or so people uh, that were living there in, uh, you know, before the storm. So what do you think happened in the Florida Keys in the year 2020? How many people? There were 74,228 people there in 2019 a year later, which you will not find mentioned anywhere in that fine article by Mr. Biddle, there were 82,809 people. So between 2019 and 2020, the growth rate for the Florida Keys in one year was 10.36% as 8,000 people poured into the Keys. There's no way of knowing how many of those 8,000 were, you, you know, these included those out of the 3,000 that had left. So as this is telling me, it, uh, it took a couple of years to, to rebuild uh, down there and took a couple of years for, for clueless morons to forget. And in one year, the pot 8,000 people uh, moved back in. So there were, so there were 5,000 more people in the year uh, 2020 than there were before the hurricane. Uh, 5,000 more people. Sound really sounds like a climate exodus has begun. Now to be somewhat fair to Jake, about 600 people, 600 people moved out out of the Keys in 2021 and it looks like about the same amount of people there is going to uh, show up that moved out in 2022. So right now, uh, if you believe these figures, and, and, and again, it's hard to count who lives in Florida because the population of the Florida Keys probably doubles. Uh, in the winter when the snowbirds get there. So now they're saying 81,531 people 
living in the Keys. So there were 77,000 people before Irma. Now there's 81,500, not counting the thousands and thousands of snowbirds who at least are uh, not down there during hurricane season. So, you know, Jake is being a little bit, is the word disingenuous? Is that the word disingenuous? Uh, claiming that Florida's climate exodus has begun. Okay, Jake, in the past two years, 1,200 people have moved out of the Florida Keys. Meanwhile, 318,000 people moved to Florida last year. Now, I don't know, the, the number crunching isn't in from uh, that big hurricane they had down there, the name of which I have already forgotten, Ian. So I don't know what's going on with Ian. Of course, I'm reading the mainstream media stories, how Fort Myers Beach is you know, already reopening for business and everyone will forget about this. So, uh, my, you know, my, my prediction uh, about the net migration out of Florida and Texas and hell, throw in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Arizona, 10 years ago, uh, I, I was thinking, surely by now, you, you, you know, by 2023, I went down this rabbit hole in 2009 is when I decided to get the hell out of Texas. Took me a few years. Uh, but anyway, what this is, it, it, it's, it's uh, a doubt now. My prediction and Jake's prediction is correct. Eventually, there's going to be a net migration out of the south, uh, out of the southern states up to the north. Uh, but at this point, uh, anybody thinking that there is a, a climate exodus in Florida? I'm sorry, Jake, pull your head out of your ass. It's the totally opposite. There is no climate exodus in, out of Florida. There is a clueless moron, a clueless moron deluge pouring out of the northern states into Florida, Texas, the Carolinas, and Arizona. And there will continue for, for how much longer uh, before these clueless m morons uh, understand what the hell is it going to take uh, for a, a true climate exodus to begin uh, out of Florida? I, I don't know, guys. The, the ability to deny uh, you know, my brother, he was right in the middle of uh, that, that uh, storm in Fort Myers. I mean, ground zero, my brother and I don't speak anymore because uh, we, we stopped speaking to each other during Corona panic. Uh, one more casualty of Corona panic. Uh, but uh, as far as I know, uh, he's still down there in Florida. It wasn't enough. Uh, he and I, I do know that he and his wife, let's see, they had a two-story house, thank God. So they uh, weathered the storm in the second story of their house. Both of their cars floated away down the street. They lost both their cars and their entire first floor. You know, all of their furniture, all of their appliances were destroyed. My guess is they're never moving back into that house in, uh, in Fort Myers. And do you think my brother, he's got a master's degree in, in, in journalism. Do you think he's, do you think that was enough? Spending the night uh, in the upstairs of your house as the flood waters pour through your house and your cars go washing down the street 
you, you might think somebody with a master's in journalism, his, his wife has a master's degree. And they're still in Florida. I, last I heard, they were holing up in a condo in Naples. I, I, I just don't get it, people. Uh, but anyway, the great climate exodus has begun. Speaking of climate exodus, I am climate exiting the great state of New York for a couple more months, so I have to go pack my bags for the taxi so I can head down and get some dental tourism while I still can. My guys.